All right, chip of the day. Uh, this is a um, very, I have fond memories of this chip, let's put it that way. It is an HEDS-1000, which stands for Hewlett Packard Emitter Detector Systems. So this has both an emitter and a detector in optics. And I have to say, um, so when I graduated from college, my first job out of college was to work for the Hewlett Packard Optoelectronics Division that made these things. And this particular product, I think, really opened my eyes about what can be done using optics and electronics at the same time. So we'll talk about that a little bit as we go here. So what is it? Well, it's actually a barcode sensor, um, but it can be used for other things as well. It is a non-contact sensor that sends out light and then looks at the reflected light, okay? So we've seen those before, but this one does it in a fancy way. Okay, it uses 700 nanometers, although we can actually see that with the visible eye. Um, all right, it's in this neat can. Let me, let me show you one here. Uh, it looks like a, a op amp can, only it's really, really long. Okay, and it's got a window on it. So um, let's go ahead and I'll show you some photographs of it up close. Um, so the package is hermetically sealed, which is nice. And then inside the package, you'll see there's two different um, integrated circuits. One is an LED and one is a photodiode. But these two objects are actually quite uh, custom for this particular part. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to focus light onto a spot. And if you just start with a general LED, it's just a big kind of squarish blob. Uh, this particular LED was designed in particular to be a round circle with these electrical contacts 120 degrees apart. And so the light coming off of that LED is a perfect circle, okay? And then that gets imaged out into space. Now the photodiode, as you see here, is actually a, a photodiode and a transistor, so it's a phototransistor. So it's actually a two special, um, two special pieces of silicon. Now um, the LED is going to be gallium arsenide, so it's not silicon, but the other one is silicon. All right, in front of these two objects is going to be lenses, and a, a lens for the light going out and a lens for the light coming back. And those are this red uh, plastic lens. And we'll talk more about this lens of why it is, what it looks like. And then there's a, there's a piece of glass that's a window to the outside world and it all goes in a can. All right, let's take a look at a uh, diagram of what we just looked at. All right, um, so what we saw was uh, these two objects, the LED and the photo, de photo detector on a substrate. And then this is that lens, okay? So it's actually two lenses. Um, if you look at a normal lens, okay, here, here's, here's a normal lens, and you have uh, optics that works like this, okay? So you have one of those here, and it focuses to this point. And you have another one here, and it focuses to this point. So actually you have, um, I'll draw it like this. Um, you actually have two of these objects focusing, I know this is a terrible drawing, but they focus to the same spot. And so you've got this lens and this lens, and their, their axes are tilted, okay? The two axes are tilted. Um, and so these two particular lenses, what's called a bifurcated lens, because it's two pieces, um, but their, their axis of rotation is slightly off each one. This one goes this away, this one goes this away. So here's its axis and here's its axis. So in my young mind, I learned so much with this particular product. First of all, you could have specialized parts to do specialized things. You could use optics in a way that it wasn't just imaging. It was actually uh, creating a spot and then collecting that. You could use a specialized lens. 
Um, you could combine lenses into a single unit. You could do all sorts of things in this, okay? Um, yeah, it really opened up my mind to being able to develop in the future uh, specialized optics and electronics to do various measurements and things, not just imaging, but various measurements. So it was uh, quite instrumental in my career path. Um, so here's what's inside. There's an LED, and there's a photodiode, and these two lenses, and there's a reflector. And then this particular photodiode is attached to a transistor, so it's a, it's a, the current gets multiplied by the beta of the transistor, so it's a phototransistor. And uh, this is what it looks like for the pinout. And different things are brought out, so you can wire it up different ways to do different things. You would put current through the LED, and then uh, here's the photodiode. You could use it just all by itself, pins three and two, or you can add the photodiode, uh, the, the uh, transistor in to do other things. So, yep, pretty cool stuff. Uh, the uh, specifications here, uh, the LED is being driven at about 35 milliamps, and the photo current's about 140 nanoamps. Uh, the HFE of the transistor is about 200. Yeah, really, really, really interesting stuff. Um, all right, so I think that's enough for the photo, for the, uh, for the data sheet here. So this is one of the applications, like I said, for barcode wand. So one of the reasons this wand was actually created was for the HP calculator, the HP 41 calculator. Um, had the ability to do a lot of programming and stuff. And we needed a, a way to get programs into the calculator easily instead of you having to type them in. And so they said, well, we could do it with barcodes. We could, we could publish books with programs, and then you could scan those programs in using a barcode wand. And that's what this barcode wand right here was used. Um, anyway, HP 41. And here's block diagram. The optical sensor is the thing we're looking at today. And then you could put in other things to digitize it and have an on-off switch and things like that. So, yeah, let's take a look at one here in the circuit. All right, I have one hooked up here. Uh, let's see if we can see the little red spot. I'll put a piece of paper over it. And can we see that in the... In the uh, Camera, I don't think we can see that. Uh, let me turn the room lights off, see if that helps us at all. Okay, I think you can see there's uh, two little red dots there, okay, in the uh, field of view. Um, so, uh, why do we have two dots? Aren't we supposed to just have one dot coming out? Well, yeah, let's look at our diagram here again. Remember, we have these two lenses, so here's the emitter. So it's going to go through this lens and create the spot where we want it to. It's actually going to go over here as well and create a spot way over here. But that spot's not going to do anything. It's not going to be captured by the detector. So it's okay that we're throwing an extra thing over here. It's just not going to do anything. So that's where we saw two spots, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the collector of the transistor on the oscilloscope. I have it AC coupled right now. Um, and uh, what we're seeing is a wiggly up and down and up and down. Why, why is that? Um, so if I put my hand over the circuit, you can see that it, it disappears, okay? So it's picking up room light, and this is the room light being amplified, and that's a 120 hertz signal from my, from my um, LED lights in the, in the garage, so that, that's what that is. But if I put, um, put my hand over it, it goes quiet, and then if I um, take my drawing, and I'm going to wave my drawing in front of it, so that spot will go across to darks, dark and lights and darks and light, and it, it should give us a signal. So there you go. You can see we're getting a signal. Every time it interrupts, a, uh, it inter interrupts something dark, uh, it, will go, it will go low because it will start to conduct and it will go low. And then when it sees something white, it will go back up high again. So there you go. That's how a barcode reader works. You'll just get a bunch of a bunch of uh, signals, and you have to process that. It becomes a serial stream. 
So anyway, there you go. It's a very simple little device, but complex in nature. And it gave me a whole bunch of ideas that I, that I uh, expanded on. So when I started out my career, I was hired as a software engineer because they needed somebody who knew how to program it forth, but quickly got moved into electrical engineering and uh, always with a bit of optics hanging on because, you know, I had a physics degree and I was always kind of hanging on to the optics things as well. And by the time I did uh, this optoelectronics things for about, um, oh, I guess about about nine years, maybe something like that. I found myself doing 100% optics. Um, it just seems as though nobody else was doing that, and I enjoyed that. So I just did all optics um, ever since. And uh, my channel is all about me kind of coming back to home base and uh, resurrecting some of those, uh, I don't know, interests that I had in the way back days uh, doing 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 electronics and getting to do a lot of things that I didn't get to do as a as an actual paid engineer I can now do in my garage as a hobbyist so yeah there you go all right that was chip of the day in HEDS 1000